Okay, so today we're here to show you and go through accessing a tree using a rope and harness. Uh, this will be done with a two rope system. Um, ascending the tree, installing an adequate anchor point and secondary anchor point. We're then going to descend through the canopy, branch walk and come back in. Okay, so the first things we're going to do when approaching the tree um, and carrying out the spec of works to be carried out, fundamentally is a, a risk assessment. We're going to go through any sort of target areas, public footpaths, buildings, obstructions, power lines, any sort of uh, contributing factor that may uh, present itself as a risk or hazard. We're also going to approach a tree and go through and look for any potential dangers, i.e. dead wood, fractured branches. Um, we're going to look at the base of the tree. We're going to look for signs of heave or any sort of movement, any fruiting bodies that may indicate decay within the, the tree. Any other wounds in the canopy, any visual uh, clues as to something that's not quite right really. And then once we're happy with that and we filled out our risk assessment and we've got all the contingencies in place, we're then going to do a pre-climb um, inspection on our equipment. As you can see here, I've laid out my equipment uh, before we start ascending the tree. And we're just going to run through some sort of daily checks as a, as a climber that you'll be doing. It's all part of uh, Pua and Lola regulations. And we're just looking for maintenance and, and safety of the equipment, making sure everything's in, in good check, everything's as it should be. We'll go through the ropes. We're checking for frays or any sort of wear that may occur during the, the work in the canopy of the tree. We just want to make sure that everything's as it should be really. And we'll keep a record of this. Even though the equipment's checked every six months you should be doing daily checks um, yourself and weekly records as well. Go through it at the end of the week, check everything thoroughly and just keep a record of this. So once we're happy with that, we've done all our checks, we'll then um, proceed to ascend. Okay, so uh, we've approached the tree. I've come over and I've planned my, my route for ascent. So I'm looking for two anchor points to get started really. So we've got the rope and we're gonna make a bag or a monkey basket. It's different sort of uh, names for it. But we're making a few wraps, trying to keep the, the bag as tight and compact as possible. This is gonna aid us to get a better aim for the branch that we're trying to throw it over. So we'll give that a couple of wraps. And give it a bit of slack so we've got some, something to play with. And just make sure the area is clear. You haven't got anything the rope's going to pick up on and get stuck. Once we're happy with that, and we've picked the branch we're going for. And we're in. Okay, so the rope's over. Just give it a few flicks now to encourage it down. Keep it tight into the union there. That's our first rope. Perfect. That's primary line installed. Running on a prussic on this one and a zigzag. I'm just going to load test the system before ascending. Dress the knot, make sure we're happy with everything. It's fine. Same again on a primary line. And low test the anchor point. 
Okay, we're happy with that, and we're ready to ascend. So, one of the benefits of using a, a zigzag is it's self-tending, so I can concentrate on the second line. We don't want any more than 500 mil slack in the system or any more than 250 mil above our anchor points and two points of contact at all times. So we're approaching our anchor points now and we'll be ready for a changeover. Okay, so when changing over, we're going to take our strop. We install that. Okay, so I've installed my side strop. I've load tested it. We're happy we can remove the slack out of this other system to proceed. And we're just going to flick it over the next branch. Install that. Again, load test, make sure we're happy, check carabiners. And remove our side strop and progress. Same again now, we're going to install a strop. Load test. Remove one of the lines. And again, advance. Then we're going to remove the lower system because we're going to more than 250 mil above that if we don't. We can take the slack out these other systems as we advance. Then we're free to. Load test, move, advance. We're going above that point now, so we need to install a secondary point of contact. Check.
stream. Right. So we're approaching the top of the tree now, somewhere where we want to set our working anchor point. Obviously we're going for the most central, highest point of the tree to make it easier for maneuvering through the canopy. But also, we've got to take into account when we do this that our points have to be load bearing. They can be unload bearing if it's just for work positioning and we have two load bearing points. So we've got to take into account when selecting these points, their safety. So we don't we don't want included unions or any defects or any dead we want a nice strong sort of life point so I've identified this one it's a nice firm union it's a nice high point it gives us a direction of clear line and we want to keep our lines in check if we ever need to descend in an emergency we want to make sure if anything happens we can just directly descend to the ground we fed our ropes through. We haven't got a big knotted mess that's going to hinder us. That's the last thing you want if you do need to descend rapidly. So now we're at a point where we're ready to install our anchor point. So using the cambium saver, I'm going to put our rope through, making sure it's the right way around, but retrieval. And when we pull that through, we'll have a toggle on the end of the rope, go through the big ring, pull in the second ring, and retrieving the system from the ground. We'll check all that, we'll load test it before. Happy with that, so we can take the smack out of our system there. I'm happy with that second point. So, Anchor points installed, we're ready to go through the canopy of the tree now. Now I'm going to do a carry out a branch walk there, you can probably see the camera on the floor just about. I'm going to go that way. So I'm just going to pull these lines up. As I said previously, we want to make sure everything's in check and we we can descend if needed. About a day today, we've got a slight breeze. It's dry. Okay. Good enough slack there. Now we're going to guide that through there. Beautiful. What I'm doing now is I'm not just making sure my ropes are in the path I'm going to follow, we're checking we've got enough to descend. So we're doubling up. And if I, I know that touches the ground, 
we've got plenty enough rope we can descend in one go we haven't got to change points so i'm happy with that we'll carry on feeding the rope through again stopper knots at the end so we can't go through our system if we run out of rope just give that a flick look at the browns on there he's going to sort that out perfect okay so that system in place Low test both. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So, proceed to descend. Nice, steady, controlled descent, especially on prussics. You don't want to glaze the ropes, cause the, it won't have the correct friction, and the system will just tend to feed itself, it won't lock off. Checking our path. Um. Right, so now we're ready for uh, our branch walk. We're gonna move her out to, towards the tips of the branch. We could use our side strop for positioning, um, making sure we don't come in uncontrolled if we were to slip. Especially on wet days, the top of these branches become very wet and slippy with all the lichen and everything else. It can be quite uh, tetris at times. So today we're happy, I'm not going to use that, but we will go through. Once I get out there, we'll, we'll anchor in so we can't uh, fail in. But we're just going to release some of the slack of the system, sitting back into our ropes and sort of advance out. Nice and controlled. Okay, so now I've reached the point where um, we're going to carry out the work of a reduction or something like that. We're going to install a work positioning system now. Again, I've got two anchor points, so this doesn't have to be load bearing. Um, it's just a position. I've chosen a bigger load bearing one because if I were to slip, it's going to stop me from going in towards the main trunk in an uncontrolled fashion but at the moment if I were to carry out any work it just means I'm in a safe secure position to carry out any pruning so we've carried out what we need to do now we need to descend in desirably in a, in a controlled fashion and again we can use the size drop to help control this if we feel that we're not confident or conditions are slightly wet and slippy, it's a bit breezy and maybe our balance is off, but we can tie in, lower ourselves down, release the system and just move in a control fashion in that way. Conditions are good today, so I'm pretty happy. We can just descend in, I can hold the branches. I'm just gently walking in, little steps in a controlled manner. Again, just keeping up with the, the system, taking the slack out. And again, we're just slowly advancing. And we're happy with that. Okay, so on our assessment, we maybe we might have to carry out two branch walks. So we've, we've done our first one. I've just ascended the tree now to redirect my ropes over these branches to give myself a better path for this one. What we're also going to do is, while I'm here, in the second part of this assessment, you're required to carry out an aerial rescue. So this usually involves getting out further on the limb where an injured climber might find themselves situated. Using uh, redirects to get ourselves out to come above, from above the to the casualty and get level with him to carry out the, the rescue in, a, in the correct manner. So we're going to use a natural redirect here, which is going to be this, this uh, fork on the branch there. So we're going to walk out to that, redirect our ropes down through the fork and descend to where the casualty would be.
Right, so once we're in this fork or this natural redirect as we're going to use it, we're going to just keep our tails of the rope in check. So again, we're going to thread them through and follow the path we're going to take. Also, while doing this, we can check to see if we have another rope in the system to be able to descend in one go. So we're just making sure that that reaches the ground while we've still got hold of it. Excellent, that's fine. Put our stopper knots in still. Just put those through there. Now when coming through on the redirect, we want to keep ourselves away from that crotch. We don't want to put too much friction on there, <clears throat> especially on that device. We don't want to get that stuck in that union. So we're keeping our legs straight. We're sitting back on the ropes in our harness, relying on the equipment and take as much out of that as we can, put as much get clearance from that union there. Once we're happy with that, we can come in in a controlled manner. And you can see there, this system hasn't got wedged there. The last thing we want to do is have a friction on that and our body weight where we can't descend ourselves. And then we put ourselves in danger. So we've redirected our line now. You can see from my anchor point, over there, it's come down, and we're just naturally redirecting that to be able to get to a casualty and have a straightforward descent. Okay, so that's part one of this unit and part two, as I've just said, will involve an aerial rescue and that will come in uh, the second part of the video.